College dreams come true. Nine million dollars in scholarships. There is another way to pay scholarships and grants. Forty thousand dollar college scholarship. A new company promised to fund him for life. Now, you're probably wondering when someone wins a whooping $1 million or more in scholarships, where exactly does all that money go? Well, this is a question I got a lot when I posted a video on how this student broke the world record by receiving over $9 million, yes, $9 million in scholarship offers. So I thought I'd take the time to answer this question. And the truth is, it's not as straightforward as it might seem. Winning a substantial amount of scholarships doesn't necessarily mean the recipient will receive a check for the exact amount and with this video I will be explaining just that. Hey scholars and welcome back or welcome to my YouTube channel. Now as a scholarship expert I really wanted to dive deep into this topic because it's been on my mind a lot recently and for those who don't already know my background I've personally won 30 scholarships between undergrad and grad school and since 2017 have helped students not only in the US but in other nations as well win millions and millions of dollars in scholarships. Some got full rides, some got partial scholarships, some were in law school, medical school, nursing, STEM concentrations, the arts, just about any study concentration really. And with that being said, feel free to join any of my free trainings I do to get a better understanding of scholarships and other forms of financial aid, and you can find the direct link to that in my bio description down below. But moving forward here, scholarship funds are typically dispersed directly to the institution the student will attend. The money is then used to cover the cost of tuition, fees, room and board, and other education-related expenses. In some cases, the scholarship funds may also contribute towards textbooks, supplies, or even study abroad opportunities. So if you ever see a headline on the news or of someone winning a million dollars or more in scholarships from multiple schools they apply to, well, they can only accept the scholarship offer from one school because they will only be attending one school. However, if you instead hear someone say that they won their scholarships primarily from external sources, meaning ones that are not tied to a particular university, then they are more likely to keep more of their scholarship money since it can be used at almost any school. However, even with that, there are restrictions. For instance, there are tuition-only scholarships versus those that can be used for any type of college-related expense, such as how housing, transportation, and so forth. So if someone were to receive several tuition-only scholarships but already have another scholarship that fully pays for their tuition and is also tuition-only, then they cannot accept those other scholarships. However, if the scholarship is a type that can be used for any expense, then they are more likely to keep that money and have it refunded back to them to put into their bank account. And additionally, there are scholarships that will only disperse the funds directly to your school and your student account versus scholarships that will send directly to you and your bank account. So also keep that in mind. And this is important to discern because there is this not so fun thing called scholarship displacement of where when you win too much in excess scholarship money, your financial aid department may take away the existing aid you were awarded, such as from grants or scholarships they personally gave out that particular institution. So essentially, you would be replacing free money with free money, which completely defeats the purpose of having that scholarship in the first place, right? However, there are ways to potentially avoid this from happening to you. And I cover this in greater detail within both my book and my program titled The Scholarship Algorithm, which detail my step-by-step -step winning process to winning 30 scholarships between undergrad and grad. And currently I have a student who is in my program who is in this exact predicament. He and his mother, they're trying to figure out how to allocate $246,000 in scholarships that he won after learning from my program. And see, this is a very unique and rare situation to be in. And I was in it as well with the scholarships I won. And with that being said, if you are wanting to learn more about my book and program, that will be linked in the description box down below. But moving forward here. Now you may be wondering, do the winners have any control over the scholarship funds? Well, 
It depends. Some scholarships offer a degree of flexibility, allowing recipients to allocate a portion of the funds towards a specific semester or later for a different school year when they need the money more, which is referred to as scholarship deferment. However, these terms can vary significantly from scholarship to scholarship. For instance, with scholarship deferment, some scholarships may not allow that because they had initial plans to award X amount of money that particular year, which may also benefit them for the upcoming tax season, right? So instead of deferring the scholarship, you may find yourself being replaced by someone who was a runner-up to you for that same scholarship and then the committee may tell you to reapply for that scholarship again the following year when it opens up. And thus this puts you right back into the competitive pool all over again. How fun. Or instead with that scholarship, you can't even reapply because the following year you won't be eligible for that scholarship, such as if it's one specifically for high school seniors, but the following year you will be a college freshman. So in that case, there really isn't a better luck next time for that scholarship, which sucks. Another thing to keep in mind when it comes to scholarships are additional perks such as mentoring ship programs, networking opportunities, or even internship placements. If you ever find yourself trying to weigh the pros and cons of keeping one scholarship over not accepting another one, make sure to see and also ask via email if these types of added benefits are bundled in with the scholarship. For instance, if you were to win the $40,000 Amazon Future Engineer Scholarship and another scholarship worth the same amount of money, but you know that you can only accept one of the two, well, it may make more sense to keep the Amazon one because of not only the prestige behind the name, but also the connections you can get from being a recipient of it, as well as because the scholarship comes with an internship opportunity. And speaking of the Amazon Scholarship, I have actually helped several students win this, as well as other huge and highly competitive scholarships such as from Dr. Pepper, Taco Bell, and other big name companies. So if you would like my free financial aid toolkit, which mentions even more company scholarships and various other resources, then make sure to go to my bio description down below or my pinned comment under this video. Additionally, some of the students mentioned who won these highly, highly competitive scholarships studied my book or program to drastically increase their winning chances. So if you are interested in either one of those, feel free to also check that down in the bio description. Also, when it comes to scholarships, some may be taken away or not renewed to the next year if you don't meet and maintain certain criteria. For instance, I had a scholarship that in order to keep, I had to do X amount of community service per school year and maintain a certain GPA. Or let's say that you suddenly change your major, which about 30 to 50% of college students do, by the way, to something totally unrelated to what you initially were studying and you have several renewable scholarships that were awarded to you based on your major. Well, in some cases, those renewable awards may no longer be renewable if those over the scholarship have no interest in endorsing your new career path. So make sure that you keep that in mind as well before you consider doing a different major. So guys, it's essential to read the fine print and understand the terms and conditions of each scholarship you apply for or are awarded. And remember, transparency is key. If you have any doubts or questions, don't hesitate to reach out to the scholarship provider or the financial aid office at your institution. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel as well as follow me on TikTok and Instagram for more student-centered advice. Well, that's it. Thank you for watching. Bye.